I want to say how thankful I am to be in the house of God tonight. Amen. Praise God. There is no better place than the house of God. Right. The Bible tells us better is one day in your courts, O Lord, than a thousand elsewhere. Because the presence of God is better than any place we could ever be in this world. That's right. In the presence of God, there is love, there is hope, there is grace, there is mercy, there is holiness. And we get to experience one another in this place together, the love of God and the hope for humanity, the greatest message this world has ever heard in Jesus Christ. I thank you, brothers and sisters, for welcoming me here. I want to say a special thank you from the bottom of my heart to Pastor Antonia, this church, First Romanian, all the senior elders and the pastors and the leaders. Um, we send our greetings from California. I thank you so much that you've allowed us to come here tonight. I thank you so much for the youth of your church for serving and sacrificing your time this weekend to preach the gospel, to share the love of God with one another, to encourage one another in these days. I want to thank so many people. I want to thank Cornell for reaching out and coming and being present there and helping me and, and Marius and Brother Marius and Daniel, who I know so well from prison ministry and our time and experience ministering together uh, with our brothers here, with Emmy and others. Tonight I have a message for you guys to try to encourage you in the times that we live in. I come to you with a message of good news. In a world surrounded with evil and uncertainty, I bring you not an old message, but a message that's renewed because we need to hear it again. And over and over, we need to hear it again because it's the greatest message known to mankind. It's the message of Jesus Christ. It's the gospel that Paul the Apostle says, I am not ashamed of Amen. the gospel of Jesus Christ Amen. because it is the power to save. Amen. Glory to Jesus. It is the power to save. Amen. In our day and age, we want quick solutions to everything. When everything has been limited to a quick five-second soundbite, a TikTok video, an Instagram reel. We want quick solutions to all of our life's problems. I tell you, God does work, and he does change people's lives. He doesn't always work according to our time, but our Heavenly Father is at work in this world. Amen. I did, in fact, while well, I had an opportunity to see how God is changing people's lives all around us Amen. because they are listening to the gospel message. Amen. They're listening to the Word of God, and the Word of God has the power to transform the worst of sinners, Amen. the most wicked heart, to turn them to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why Paul the Apostle proclaims, I'm not ashamed of the gospel Hallelujah. because it is the power of God to save. Amen. And we have this gospel message. The world does not have what we have. You will not find what we have here in our churches out there. There is no institution out in the world like the church of Jesus Christ. I look at you and I know it's a sin but I envy you, and I'm jealous of this church because of how beautiful you all sing songs to the Lord. Glory to Jesus. You sing songs that we can all sing to. You sing these beautiful chorus songs, lifting up the name of God, praising God. I see in this church families sitting together, Hallelujah. fathers and sons. I see people of every generation, which is the way the church of Jesus Christ should be. Amen. Glory to King Jesus. And I look out at the elders in this church who support all of us in prayer in every means possible so that we too can carry on the work of Jesus Christ in our generation. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for this church. May God continue to bless First Romanian and the pastors and the families of this church because you do the work of God. Amen. I tell you the truth. This world knows nothing of God. They become further and further separated from God. And man in his folly has thought that he can outwit God. He has always thought in his intelligence, in his worldly wisdom, if you will, in his knowledge, in his information, he believes he can escape 
the wrath and the judgment of God. He thinks he could find deliverance in himself. But brothers and sisters, if one thing we've learned in 2020, the year of our Lord, that we haven't learned in the thousands of years of human history, if we haven't learned, is this. There is no greater knowledge than the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The knowledge of mankind is limited. It's not there in the higher systems of education, and I know because I've been there. They don't have the answers to life and death and what comes after. They don't. All man knows how to do is talk. And all of their information, all of their knowledge, all of their statistics, all of their combined information in the information age we live cannot save them from the mighty hand of God and the judgment of God. Look at how God has made foolish the wisdom of this world. The reports of the real statistics coming out of this so-called pandemic doesn't even fit their own definition of what a pandemic is. How inflated these numbers are and how blown out of proportion, not to say it's not a serious thing, brothers and sisters, do not confuse this with me. What I, all I try to say is this, man does not know how to respond to crisis. And this virus, though serious as it is, is a crisis. When crisis comes, knowledge will not save you. Knowledge will not help you. Those degrees that people accumulate, their understandings will not help them in that day of judgment, in that day of wrath. Only God can. There was a teacher who came to Jesus one day. And this teacher came to Jesus, a ruler of the Jews, a very important person, very knowledgeable. And in those days, to be a ruler of the Jews in the synagogues, to be a ruler of the Pharisees in those regions, you had to be well-trained in the scriptures. You had to know your stuff. You had to be among the best of the best. And this man at night came to Jesus one night. His name was Nicodemus. And he looked to Jesus The man who was so notorious for, where did you go to school and get your education? Was born in Bethlehem. Born of Mary, son of Joseph. Who was this man? This Nicodemus came to Jesus one day and said, tell us, good teacher, we know. We know that you come from God. Because no man can do the works that you do unless he comes from God. No man can heal the blind, can cleanse the lepers. No man can do what you do, these mighty miracles, unless this person is from God. And Jesus responded to the teacher. He said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. How can these things be, the teacher said. I don't understand, he said. Explain, how can this be? And Jesus said, you are a teacher of Israel, and you do not know. We speak, he said, of things we know. If I told you of earthly things and you don't understand, how are you going to possibly understand heavenly things? We need to understand the limits of our knowledge. We need to understand knowledge won't help us. And that is why Jesus was pointing us back to God, pointing people back to the heart of God, his intention for mankind, his plan for humanity, because it's not in our knowledge. Paul the Apostle hints at this in his letter to the Corinthians. Knowledge will pass away. All these things will pass away. But love endures forever. It's the love of God. And he tells this Pharisee to look beyond the limits of his human knowledge, his human understanding, to look to one who has come from above to show us the way. He came from above to show people the way, to teach them about how to find their way to God, how to believe and trust in God, how to live a life of integrity in in a way that's pleasing to God. 
He came to show people the way to holiness. And as a matter of fact, he didn't make it easier for people. He didn't say, lower the bar. No. In fact, he said, if your righteousness does not exceed that of the Pharisees, you may by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. He came to show us the way, to teach us the way, to expose the human the the limits of our human knowledge, and to see our dependence on God. We need him. That's why he sent his son down to earth to show us the way, to teach us a lesson about the heart of God, the love of God. We need to see the limits of our human knowledge, but we also need to understand the lessons of love, and not just love in the world sense of what they understand love to be, but love according to God. Because Jesus says further, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. Amen. The lessons of love. There's one who's come down to not only show us the way, to teach us the way, but there's one who has come from above who loves us. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only son. His only son. How many of us would give up what's most precious to us? Like Abraham and his son, his only son. When God asked him to bring his son as a sacrifice. And that day God withheld his hand with that angel. Withholding the hand of Abraham from sacrificing his son. And he said to Abraham, I know now that you fear God. And at the appointed time, God sent his son. And did not spare. It's an incredible story. This world knows nothing of true love. The love of a father and his only son. The most precious love this world has ever known. It's the love Paul the Apostle talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It keeps no record of wrongdoings. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. One thing I feel in my heart, and I can say with confidence, is that I know that the pastors in this church love you. I know that the parents in this church love you. Would do anything for you would sacrifice all that they can for you. It's the love of God. I want to tell you a story as I conclude. Some years ago, Brother Emmy um, invited me to join uh, Daniel and a few friends to uh, prison ministry in California. I don't know what, how God had put it on your heart to call me, brother, but he had called me, and he said, do you have some free time and come and join us and love to do it. And I said, you know what? Yeah, I am free. I work in youth ministry. What else do I do? And I said, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go and join and, and see this because I want, to, I want to go try this. And I went to prison ministry with our brothers. And that was an experience. So if you have an opportunity, if they ever go, I encourage you, for those of you that are courageous enough, to go. It was through that experience that I, I learned by dealing with some of the most hardened criminals and some of these people that deep down inside, they're still human beings. Yes, even the most hardened criminal has a heart. And it was an interesting experience, and I thank Emmy um, so much for inviting me, because some time later, um, a position had opened up for me to work at a prison, and a women's prison of all places. I don't know, God must have a sense of humor. But he sent me there for some reason. And I can't explain how I uh, received this position, but I'm working there at the institution here uh, down in California at a women's institution. And there was a lady, and I'll, I'll say this, there was one lady there who was a hardened inmate who had become a devout Muslim. Very devout. And myself and a couple of other volunteer uh, Christians there were ministering to her. She had returned back to prison because of a crime she had committed right after being released after many years. Completely in disarray, depressed, 
all of her friends that she has spent years and years and years in prison with forsook her. She came to the office one day and the Christians had come together and had prayed for her and had encouraged her not to take her life, to give her hope that Jesus can save, Jesus can redeem even the most difficult situations. And because of, uh, <clears throat> let's just say this, complications uh, beyond my ability to control, I had uh, decided to transition from that place. And before I had left, this woman had heard about my leaving, and somebody had sent her over to the office where we were working. And we were there, and she said, Chaplain, you need to hear these words. I've given my life to Jesus Christ. I've given my life to Jesus Christ. Very tough person. I mean, you'd think this person would not come to faith. What? What did, what did I preach? What did I say? Nothing. You didn't say, <laughs> it's nothing that you preached. It's nothing that you did. And she began to cry these tears. And I've never seen anything like this in my life. Please believe me when I say this to you. She said, I never knew the love of God. I never knew the love of God. It was the last day I was there. And I tell you, there's power in the gospel Hallelujah. of Jesus Christ. Amen. The promise and the hope of eternal life. What more does this world want? What more does this world need than the love of God and the promise, the assurance of eternal life? You have this message. You have what the world needs to hear. You are the light in this world. May God bless you to be resilient evangelists and a people of God a shining light on a hill for people to see. God bless First Romanian. Thank you for this time. May God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name.